let me just review some of the agenda we discussed in our last session we um, understand understanding how a business generates revenue is very important because that is more like the whole thing about business revenue is like the umbrella of a business in case you missed part of the last uh, webinar that we had my uh, coordinator we also share that link with us so that you can go through it again and then we discuss some components of revenue before uh, you have anything called revenue you must have two main components we call that price and quantity irrespective of the type of industry you fall into and you said hey about building a model model is all about drivers and we also discussed that as well and then we did some game where we had some prizes and we did some at uh, them so let's just go straight to it let's go straight to it the demo let's continue so All right, so uh, let's go straight to where we stopped in our previous um, in our previous webinar uh, session. So let me open this Excel file and let me just run. Let me just recap. Let me just recap. So we are assuming that okay, yes, this is a business, and uh, what they will be doing is um, they will be uh, giving loan out to uh, people. Now that loan will be dependent on uh, people that save on their platform. So uh, one thing I want us to understand is, is is a model, and the reason why it's called model is because it you are uh, you can be flexible. You can incorporate different different scenarios, right? But the other thing is, hey, understand, hey, this is how to approach it, and that approach, that concept is now what you apply, irrespective of the type of business model they adopt. They said, okay, you know what? Yes, people can be saving, but the savings, the loan will be given out will not be dependent on the savings people are saving. Maybe they will raise some uh, other investments, right? They have some surplus cash that they can give out, right? So how do you get to build that into that revenue and everything is perfect? So for this one, we're saying, okay, you know what? Let's start first. Let's say people deposit, which is more like a typical uh, uh, operation of a bank, right people deposit into the bank the money you and i take into the bank is what the bank will convert and use it to give loan out to people right they still have some support cash then they invest it in some other uh, investment security to generate interest income and that's more like the approach so let me run us through the assumption that we're able to build so we built we built this from scratch yes so you can re reference to the previous one so we said let's start with our base users and we said you know what for the base let's start with 500 people and we also agreed that okay you know what let's build this calculation month on month i said okay so growing monthly we said let's have let's assume we have 500 all right and can be growing so everything in year one we grow by five percent in year two 12.5 percent uh so more like average monthly growth right and uh year four and year five and we said okay you know what yes you can have a base user where on your platform you're saying you have five million users but the truth is are you really generating from all those five million users and that's what brought about this discussion of what we call active users okay yes you have five million users yes five million have actually uh, five million people downloaded your app but what percent is really uh generating revenue for you on that platform and that is why we set this so 50 percent in year one 60 percent year two 70 percent year three and then you realize that in year four and year five we start we decide to make it const we decide to reduce it and you'll be like okay why but everything's supposed to be increasing and the truth is if you have a so if you have 100 on, let's say you have uh you have uh 100 people you're saying hey i'll be generating 50 percent from this 100 people that means you are generating you have 50. now if you now increase to 1000 I said, okay, this is now 1,000. I will be generating 50%. You know, that will be 500, right? So, okay, let, no, 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 I don't want to be generate 500. Let me say I'm, I'll be generating 25%. That will still be like around 250, which is still higher than the 50% on 100. So that's how I want us to think. So a business gets to a level of growth where they are uh, in growth increment kind of reduce it does not mean it's not increasing right but that's growth kind of slow down a little bit uh a 5.7 percent increase in coca-cola revenue can never be compared to a 25 percent increase in a business that is just starting 
which is a kind of a beverage uh, industry, right? So that's how I want us to understand. Yes, I know most people usually forecast and you see like the revenue will just be growing, 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 growing. The truth is that does not apply in reality when it comes to business, right? Business don't grow on a straight line. I've never seen a business that is growing on a straight line. And what I mean is, hey, this year, Revenue growth, right? Percent increase is 10%. The following year, 25%. Another year, 35%. Another year, 45%. Another year, 60%. We are not saying revenue will not grow, but that percent increase, increase, right? Is not always a straight line. You can see that why we decided to slow to have this in our monthly base user growth. So we are saying, Hey, this period, you have 500 and everything will be increased by this time. Maybe you would have gotten to a 5,000 users, right? And at that point, you've already, uh, gained the market. So you, the growth might slow down because it's 2.5%. So let's say you have a 5,000 previous month, churn rate, people that buy today and are not buying tomorrow. So let's start. Let's get start. Uh, let, let's start with that one. So let, let's, let's take a step back. Let's Let's take a step back to see how we started our, our calculation. So we build this out month on month, and this is what we have here. So we now said let's build out our base, our base users. All right. So let me equal to I'll go to my inputs, base users that we are starting with. So let's call this. Um, we can just copy the units. Right. Then uh, for the base period equal to so whenever you are building your model, your model should always have something we call base period. Base period is as good as last historical year or your year zero. So let's say hey, uh, the business starting, try to acquire spending money on marketing and all those things. Let's say they can get started with five hundred uh, uh, users, right? Then what is their growth? Now this growth has been set to be more like a monthly. Growth. So what we are saying is, hey, everything in year 2022 will increase by this 5%. Everything in year 2023 will increase by this 12.5% fat. It's always good to give that description. Let's say percent um, monthly. Right. So that, that is well explanatory. So let's, let's bring, let's bring that growth. Let's bring that growth. So we are going to do this as just assume as if where I'm building, I'm going to do this presentation as if I'm building my own typical model. So I'm going to do some intentional mistake, right? So that you know that, Hey, it's not always perfect, but the truth is, Hey, whenever you are doing anything as a modeling concept, number one, know your expected output, then ask, is this making sense? So that can help you, uh, uh limit errors in building a model. Trust me. Right. So there. Yeah. Let me put this as percent. I'm going to what I need now is remember what I said. Everything in year one will increase by this five percent, and I want to automate this. So I'm going to use a formula we call lookup in Excel. Lookup, right? You can lose use lookup. You can use um, um match and index, right? Excel is very very interesting. They all you always have more than one or two ways of getting things done. So, so lookup. What are we looking for? What are we looking for? So we are looking for, okay, let me put it down again. So look up, we are looking for this, our year, which is year 2020. So let me just keep the uh, row constant. So by the time, I, so that I can copy it for other cells, right? Comma, then it's asking me my lookup vector. So I'm looking for this two, 2022. I'm looking for it in this, my year that I've created here, right? I'm going to keep that year constant because I'm going to drag everything. So comma, then what should be the result vector? So I want it to return this our monthly growth. So I will highlight everything and I'll just lock the column. Put the bracket and press enter. Let me convert this into percent. Let me put it into my percent format. And I can just drag it to the right and press my control R. So uh, in the previous session, we were able to set this out to set your uh, Excel worksheets right into this monthly calculation so that you don't need to be just all you need to do is put for year one highlights everything to the last year and press control hard so we can see what we have here so everything in year one we are expecting an average of what average of five percent growth right and then in year two we also have this i'm i'm quite sure uh, the question that will come up into uh, some of us mind will be like but a typical business really does not grow like this right uh i agree with you 
So you are saying, hey, in month one, so maybe the percent will be 5.5. In year three, it might slow down. In year three, it might go up. In year four, it might slow down. In year five, it might slow down. Right? Yes, that is truth. But uh, based on our first standard, he's saying, you know what? Don't overcluster your model with a lot of assumptions. The truth is, it does not make sense when you have all your inputs, input worksheets laid out month or month so you say in january one 2020 this will be our percent in january two yes you can do that for a typical management um, um model and all those things right but try to keep things uh short so it's a you want average of five percent growth so we could have uh, a variation it could increase it could but that average kind of help us balance things up so in you, the, another thing you could do is to now factor in seasonality but that will be another discussion for uh, another webinar, which could just kind of help you, uh, which kind of help you create those uh, uh, moving trend. Right? I say hey, maybe in January one, people tends to uh, uh, people don't save that much, right? Then you're saying, okay, yes, this period, let's expect our revenue, people savings will kind of go down a little bit, and we too might not be able to dispose more, uh, more loans in February. Uh, yes, it might still slow down, but when it's getting to may june people want to save right towards december so the savings so, so those are kind of what that seasonality uh, trend we help us achieve so let's keep it short yes so base so let's create our base schedule uh okay i'm not sure since i've forgotten the spelling of schedule okay i think i got it now <laughs> i think i got it now so then we're going to have our beginning users beginning users right we have our uh, added users so add um so new users coming in then we have our ending users number so let me put this in our total format then our base users enter then that base users will be our beginning users starting with these guys so our addition right so let me increase this this will be equal to my base here multiplied by my brackets one plus this my growth uh, monthly growth rate enter close the brackets let me remove the comma because this these are people right so copy that to the right and then we expect by the end of the year five we should be able to have twenty seven thousand nine hundred and seventy three users so remember these are just fictitious assumption and it's just to let us understand the whole framework and the uh, the concept so new users will now be equal to my current base users minus my previous year users enter and the summation we also give us the same thing that we have up here so let me drag this to the right you can see that we have almost the same thing which means we've settled out our base users now the next thing is to now get our active users active users so i'll come in here that's just to make to make it um uh, Easy for people to understand. So that part base users. So let me change the format, and this will now be our active users. So equal to let me link that to here. Percent of our base users. That's what we said would be our active users. So, so I can even use that same. Um, this our lookup. I will copy it. Copy it here. I'm a very lazy uh, financial. I'm a very lazy Excel user. So I love doing things very very fast yes the lazy people we know exactly where you know that you get to do things faster <laughs> right so here i remember i've already done some of my cell references so in case you don't know more about cell referencing you can uh, learn that all right it's very very important cell locking or some call it cell referencing so what i'm going to do is i'll just go to my inputs i'll just look at hey this is my percent here is on uh row this should be row right row 14 so I'll come back to my calculation and just change this 19 that I'll just change it to 14. Instead of typing the formula again, then I have this. That's, that's smart. <laughs> that's smart. So let's look at our active users. Uh, active users. Right. Uh, this will be number. Active users will now be equal to. Now let me ask us, the active users, will it be a percent of the ending users? or the new added users so we need our beginning uh, users beginning active so they will be beginning active users 
right so we need our um so we need our let's add our what's our new uh active users and we need our churn users so people that buy today and they will not buy the next period right uh churn active users then we have our ending active users now i'm, I'm loving this so Okay, so now the, the truth is, and that's one thing I love about uh, finance as you. Uh, 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 the boy is in your court. You are the one drawing, right? Uh, but as much as you are drawing, you should be able to give a, a real base as to how you've drawn it and give a reasonable reason. So they are saying, hey, you should be a percent of our new users. You should be able to give a concrete reason as to why. But I decided to do my own. Hey, no, it should be a percent of ending users. You should, you should be able to give that reasonable reason as to why right so this is what i feel and let's let's apply that here as i said you can decide to do it your own way right the whole thing is hey does it make sense why has it been done this way so percent of new users as i said active users so if you are saying okay you know what let's use new users as a percent of active users so i'm telling you, equal to this my 50 percent multiplied by this my ending users enter but if i'm going through the so this is more like it but if i'm going through the route of you know what my ending active users then that will be my what i'm saying my ending users multiplied by my active my percent of my active right enter then with this i'm correct but remember we are building a schedule so because of that schedule purpose so the highest thing we can do is let's even say this percent is also the same thing right with this 50 percent i'm saying hey my base user should be this 50 this 500 multiplied by what by this 50 percent enter then that means we have a beginning users then my new active users will now be what same users will now be what my new users multiplied by this my percent that i've set for my active users and this it now makes sense but if i'm going through the route of hey my ending use my ending active users then definitely i should be using my percent multiplied by my ending user as i said the boy is your cut as long as you can defend it very well you are good so we need our chunk active users so let's also get that from our let's get that so let me change this so equal to we need our chunk rate which we set here enter right so uh, for our chunk users i can even copy the same thing let me be lazy i can copy it down let me look so this is 16 this is uh row 16 right so let me do the same thing here row 16 so let me change this my as i said a very lazy a very lazy um person just tend to get things right let's look at it so our chunk users will now be equal to chunk rate multiplied by our what more like our previous uh ending active users the uh, previous year is the same thing as beginning users so let me just press this enter then equal to my beginning balance plus my active minus my churn rate now i'm quite sure you can see one funny thing that is coming in here as i said it's all about common sense because it's as good as say you are doing one plus one plus two something multiplied by something you can see that's all i've been doing so now let's look at this there's already one funny comma that you can see there can anyone point that out just look at this what i've done here can anyone point this out okay so churn active users is lower than the base active users okay that's one i love that i love that thank you for that so people, what do you think what do you think look at it closely there's already something something is already stop here my beginning active users 250 my new active uh, my new active users right maybe let, new active users let me complete this one so new active users what can we see from here let me hear from us let me hear from us let's make this interactive john should be person of new active users mm, okay are you sure mm, um, i'm not 100 percent and uh, sure about that that the channel should be should be set on our new active users i believe it should be set on hey close this period with this set of people 
right so one thing you should see one thing we can see here is you can see that the chunk number is already higher than the new users that we are adding which really does not make sense i will say you are adding 13 active users and 25 users are also leaving it really does not make sense now let's let's look at this so that you can uh, so that we kind of see what what this is saying so if i copy this to the right let's look at what is happening so you are saying uh so if you, if you now take a look at what is the piece what is the actual percent right so these are more like to see how this is making sense what is the percent uh percent of active users of active users to our base users our base users right which is more like the, this is more like the most important uh one of the most important metrics when you are uh, in, into a fintech that's a demo which is so we are saying hey my active user divided by this my base users so let me put that in percent that in percent and let me drag it so number one you can see that now the percent so maybe let me let me freeze this my panel that's kind of easy for us to move so what basically we are saying is this hey the percent of our active users we keep dropping over the period this, this really does not mean of them right three thousand nine hundred and sixty three it really does does not make sense and, and if you look closely that churn rates keep matching up with the new users it's as good as say you are adding you are taking you're adding you are taking it really does not make sense that's those are kind of things i want you to understand as a modeler is it about is it making sense right uh, uh what are the metrics what what story are they telling you expect your conversion rate so we also call it conversion rate you expect that your conversion rate to be increasing over period so what we're going to do is this churn rate let's convert it to a let's convert it to monthly so let's say let's assume this is more like the churn rate per annum let's say per annum right more like yearly which means inside here we now need to convert this into what into uh, a monthly growth so to do that um right so our first standard is saying whenever you are building your model your model should never have what uh, should never have any ad coded value is that uh go to your inputs and type those ad coded value so let me just call this um okay so let me see let's see how we can do that so i can just create another headings up here let me just call this one our general let's call this uh general general assumptions so i'm inside here i can create my so let me put this in this our format so i like uh, whenever i'm building my model that professionalism i like it coming out right in everything i do and that's the same thing our standard is saying so okay maybe we should just call this one general assumptions call this one general assumptions right then i call this maybe timing let's call this one timing and we say this uh, month, month so month in a period so and that will be that's be like 12 months so i'll just type my 12 here so i can even use my naming range I'll come here and type it as model month enter if I come back to my calculation, what this 10% that I have here, I can now multiply it by my brackets, 1 divided by my model, that my model month, which is 12, 1 divided by 12, right, and press enter. Then I can copy that to the right. Now, I feel this just kind of make a little uh, sense, right? So you're saying, hey, you should not, you should be able to manage your clients very well. All right, so remember if you have any questions, you'll be able to drop it in the chat box so that I can address that. And now it's making sense. All right, so if you're starting with 14, 471, and you do smaller than 21, I think that's still reasonable as compared to that to what we have. So you're adding 409, right? As that's 121 people are leaving. So I think this 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 just kind of tells a very good story as compared to what we have, right? And you can see that that conversion rate is is, is now making sense, it's increasing over a period. Okay, so now that we have our active users, let's go straight to uh, the other parts. 
so we've, we've dealt with our, our users now let's go straight to our savings 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 so we are done with this guy so let's go to another edit so i can copy this editing and put it here and let's call this our revenue okay let's okay maybe let's take it one after the other let's call this our savings our savings right question of our savings and what do we have for our savings so we are saying hey uh people that will be saving right yes you can have active users of this but we're still now we're still streamlining it so uh, there's something we call top down and uh, uh bottom up uh, uh model of uh model approach so you're saying hey in this town uh, the total population is five million people right but the uh, percent that we can really uh get is maybe three million so out of that three million right how many can we even get on our platform so out of that three million I said okay yes well, we can actually uh get this three million right but people that we uh, the number that we, sh we are sure that can come on our platform is maybe two million so out of that two million how many can even buy from you so that's more like uh or what we call more like a top up top down uh, approach so here when i say okay you know what yes we have this activity but how many can even save so let's go straight to our savings and the first thing we need is equal to we need a percent of active that uh, we'll be saving on our platform. And uh, you know, you know, I, I said, as I said, so let I'll just come up here. Let me copy this, copy it. Oh, yeah, so I don't need to type that formula again. I'm trying to work smart. Don't mind me. So this is uh, row twenty six. I'll just change this six. Six. So building a monthly model, I feel is is very is so so easy equal to now remember this is just like a percent of our active users right so uh, let me see the uh, savings so i'll call this our savings users as i said this is not a one-way thing you are you can always be flexible the other thing is understand that concept and how to apply it right financial modeling is not a, a fixed one-way thing you're allowed to be flexible but as you are doing it always ask is it making sense so that means ending users multiply by this my percent right you can see now we are using that uh, other approach i can copy this to the right and we have the uh, expected number of uh, users, users that can save every month so the next thing is what do we need so let's first get our average savings per month so they are, here they are telling us that hey uh based on this right average savings per uh person expected is twenty thousand in a month so is this is in my own local currency yes 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 so let's first get that equal to average savings per user enter right so this will be in my own currency and what is the base uh, expected savings so we expected uh, at least uh, 20 thousand nera then what is that growth so let me bring that to the, the growth of that savings so if hey, someone that saves 20 thousand supposed to be that to be able to increase that savings per users right as time goes on so it's all right so this will also be in percent uh, let me also let me be lazy i'll just copy this my lookup function that are my cell reference so here is 31 i just think, okay so that one is it's working perfectly so copy that and i'll just use my growth so equal to previous year multiply by open my bracket one plus is my growth enter and i can drag that for the years so this is this is now so those are these are where we, this is how we do. Then tends to make necessary. What do we do? What do we do? Then we need to reduce this. So let's say something like uh, two point five. I think that's that's way too high. All right. So from twenty thousand, at least someone should be able to say it is seven. I think that's still high. That's still high a little bit. So uh, let me change this. Uh, let me change everything to one point five. Let's be conservative. Uh, we kind of see that. Okay. Yes. Okay. So twenty thousand, at least up to fifty thousand per month. So I think that is that is making sense. So what is our total savings? total savings right that savings that we can have then that will be equal to my uh, savings users multiplied by that average savings per users enter 
I just copy this to the right and I have this. So let me expand everything. Okay. So this is kind of huge. This is huge amounts. So for the base period, all right, uh, let's also get that. Okay. Let's, let's leave that base period. So let's create our savings, our savings, our savings, our schedule. So all these schedules, they are very, very important. Do a schedules, right? Well, let's cut this one. So let's say in our beginning savings, right? Then uh, add our new savings coming in. And we less our withdrawal. Remember, people will definitely withdraw uh, every month. So less withdrawal. Oh, let's withdraw anyone. Then we have our ending, ending savings, savings balance. So, new savings balance. So, then copy this. My beginning balance should automatically be my ending balance of previous period. Enter. My new savings will be equal to. Now let me ask us, that's our new savings. Will it be this total savings? Okay, let's let's let's, let's even look at let's say our uh, new savings will be this total savings for this period. Enter. So we come back to the withdrawal. We say beginning balance plus new savings minus withdrawal. Enter. I can drag this period. And this is this is this is huge. Right. So from two million by the end of year five, you are saying hey, we should be able to have savings of nine billion. Right, everything is achievable. I believe that's with the right strategies. But remember, we've not considered our uh, our what our withdrawal. So, what is our withdrawal? So, they said our withdrawal will be the cents of our saving. So, let's factor that in. Let's factor that in. So, uh, okay, so so that this one is well explained. Let me leave it that way. I can just create another. That so equal to my withdrawal enter that will also be in percent and copy this my guy here this formula paste it here back let me look at the row that's row 28 and i'm just put my 28 i'm just trying to work very very smart <laughs> i've been able to achieve that by the help of that my cell referencing and we know this is what we have which means our Withdrawal will now be equal to, open my brackets, that will be my beginning balance plus my new savings. And uh, yes, you know, I know we would have, what we would have done is let's consider we would have used equal to uh, previous ending savings multiplied by this, our uh, withdrawal rate, right? Let's even use that one, one first and we'll copy this to the right. So, which means in month one, no withdrawal, in month two, month three. But remember, let's also consider someone can save at the beginning of the month. Maybe in week one and decide to take back his uh withdrawal in week three or week four. Funny, funny things can happen, <laughs> right? <laughs> so uh, I think we, are, we could have used this approach average of uh, this beginning balance and this new so new added savings, close the brackets, right? Then multiply by what? Multiply by my uh withdrawal percent. Enter. So at least that we consider that hey, someone might even save and decide that hey, you know what, I want to collect my savings back. <laughs> <laughs> that same month so we consider that and with this we have our what our ending uh savings I, 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 hope the, I hope the story is making sense i hope the story is making sense at times this, this can be very very bulky it depends on on the on the business you are building the model for and uh, you could have some lot of this this that, that hey we get this user from this uh, place we get this user from this place we get that user from this place and you still need to be able to merge everything together and consolidate it. That's that's how interesting this thing can be, right? But as long as you have understand that framework, irrespective of hey, we are doing this, this you still be able to put everything together. All right. So now we have our savings. Now, do you still need anything else? So let's consider our yield on savings. So people that are savings with us, definitely they need to get return. So I saying so. But before we do that, I'd like to calculate. Let's calculate our average. Our average savings for each month. So I think this is very important. All right, this is to just make adjustment for those timing differences. Someone could save at the end of the month, someone at the beginning of the month, someone at the middle. So equal to average. Let's get our average. Enter. 
and we have our average savings yearly monthly so we are building monthly so next thing what will now be our yield the equal to I click yield here so you can see that uh, as i said uh, structuring of your model right is very very important uh, our first standard is as uh, eating very very hard on it so that you should be able to build a model and someone else should pick the model and understand without having to call you but they can do the updates right so you keep it simple Keep it simple. But we have our modeling standards in our. You should not any model you build should not take. Yeah, you know, usually it's it fast. It should not take you more than ten seconds to be able to explain any formula you put in your model. Yes, this lookup is is a typical. This one is a, is 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 still a formula. So it's not as if you are putting one formula, 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 formula here. Lookup is still basic Excel things, <laughs> right? So, uh, so yet. So let me work smart. I'll just copy this guy as well. Come down here. And put it and i'll go to my what i'll go to my i'll go to my input let me look at that row 34. okay so let me let me even work smart remember with so uh, this is my input this yield is yearly so let me convert it to monthly right i think this this is way too small i believe fintechs um I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. As I said, these are just fictitious assumptions. So let me come up here. There was one we divided with, uh, we divided by month. So this is my chunk rate. I'll just copy that formula. Come down here, paste it. Go to my input. This is row 34. I'll come back here and I'll change this my lookup vector to 44. Is that 44? I think, yes, we just checked 44, right? I hope I'm correct. Okay, it's 34. <laughs> so this should be 34. It's a four enter to so, right, and we have this is more like our monthly yield, right? So, this is this we will now call this our interest. This is what we call interest expense, right? Which is more like cost of you, uh, uh having those savings, right? Well, for a typical business, interest expense is say you go to a bank, you or someone borrow you money, and the interest you are paying on it, but to a fintech and a financial uh, institution like bank interest expense that's more like we are what they are paying you on that savings that you've given them so equal to uh that will now be equal to since we've converted our savings to average to make adjustment for those time differences multiply by this my enter copy this to the right and we have this this is more like the amount that will be shared by uh these people that have saved with us so if i even see what is the uh so they call it i think is it cost so we have cost of fund uh cost of risk and all those things so you, know, you also need to understand all those all those uh, uh metrics right they're very very important so well, we, are, we are not going there and this one so the next one is now that we have our savings let's um work with our loans so right so uh so okay so here for our loans we're saying okay yes what percent of our active users we take loans on our platform this is what we have and we say hey what is the average loan per each users monthly now ten thousand but remember this will be limited by the amount of savings that we have so even we might say that okay you know what hey yes we this is the total savings that we have what we are not taking everything out because people yes people would have withdrawn and because of of some uh funny funny things right the business too we also want to invest in some other security so maybe out of the if you have this savings of five million so we are making available maybe 3.5 or 4 million as a loan to people right so okay so we already have that so average loan ten thousand we're saying hey this loan can also grow by this so i think this is also too high let's change it to something 1.5 for now 1.5 since it's monthly so by the time you must buy that 1.5 by 12 to so give you that yearly thing so average loan times how many number of times can someone take a loan in a month and we've said this to once yes yes so loan this boss as that percent of our savings say hey we are not ready to give everything out let's say hey, 40 percent of our savings then we can still make provision that maybe uh, this other percent we also go into some investment security and we can have other cash on our platform more like our reserve right then we say that loan period anybody that takes loan from us should be for three months and this is the yield that we'll be getting on our uh, loans now we are left with one thing let me see can anyone tell us on this part of the loan and advances 
so please whenever you want to build any model for any industry it's very important that you have the knowledge of the industry itself so what you've missed out is what we call non-performing loan non-performing loans call it npl this is one very important yes so yeah, some people also call it more like a default rate this is very very important right because yes you give you've given a loan out to people and what if they fail to pay they need to make that provision Right, you need to capture the business as a whole. So, we need to consider our non-performing loan. So, for this, let me just copy this and let me put it here. And let's just say this as maybe uh five percent. Right, five percent is is way high. Right. So, yeah, you have given loud to people and people fail to pay you. And you can say you can. So you, yeah, we, I'm quite sure some of us we've experienced those funny things that they'll send you a message that hey, this is also your relative took loan from us <laughs> and is here to pay, <laughs> and all those kind of things, right? So which is we also need to factor that in into our model. So let's get started and let's go there. So here we are done with our savings. So let me just copy this our headings and let me put it here. Right. So first thing. I'll come here. Uh, let's please. We need a percent of our active users. We have here, and I can copy this my formula here. That's it. Like what we build. See, see how, instead of me typing this this over and over and over again, let me just put it here. So where do we have that? That is row thirty seven. So row thirty seven. I we'll change this to thirty seven. Seven. Enter. I can drag that to the right. So well. So okay. So I forgot to change this to our. Uh, loans and borrowing right is that what they call it let's, let's just leave it as loans okay loan and advances okay so loan and advances right so percent so um loans uh users right so this one is percent this one is number i will now be equal to this percent of active multiply by what our ending that should be multiplied by our ending our active users right enter with this right so so as i said there are different approaches you can decide that way no no people that we are giving don't you know be percent of our uh, active users it should be a percent of our what of our of people of the number of users that that are saving on that platform right because so you say that hey you know what let's consider the number of people that are saving on our platform as the main new as the uh new assume active users of active users does that make sense <laughs> active users of active users right but 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 that's more like it's um, you just saying hey let's let me try and manage my risk all right so if you are, if you are on my platform you put a uh, you, you you set up an account you should be able to save before you can access any uh loan right so yeah, yes you can now access more than savings but hey just to be sure that you're one of the active users you must save first before you uh can access loan so that's more like another approach as i said flexible understand hey this business their business model was their business canvas and that's really uh help when we are building the uh the, the model right because everything must the story must tie together so now this is our loan users now let's get our average so let's get our, our average loans to users to be in our manage my own currency right so for the base equal to we are saying we are expecting an average loan of ten thousand to people so let me copy this and put it here okay no let me put it here which will now be our loan portfolio growth but the growth of the portfolio all right okay let me change that row number to uh that should be row 40. Should be 40. just changing the number of my row, uh, return vector so here it will be equal to previous year multiply by my bracket one plus this my growth rate enter and copy that to the right so we expect to move from ten thousand to that is average of twenty five thousand uh, uh loans that can be given us so where's our total loan so total loans alone this boss so okay should we call it total loan this boss okay i hope i got that spelling 
correctly. Right. So if in Excel you uh, you are typing in Excel and you are not sure of the form of what you type, right? You can just highlight it like this on your uh, keyboard. Just press your F7. When Chris, if you have Fn, you need to press Fn. So let's assume. Uh, let me type it wrongly here. Right. This bust. This busted. Right. Okay. So I think there's a word like this as well. <laughs> So here, you see now, uh, I press that F7 and it's telling him that, hey guy, no, 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 this is supposed to be this bust. So that it can just help you correct those spellings. So uh, F7, because you are using a, a more of this, our own uh, media entertainment laptop, you need to press your Fn before you press that F7. So to so just change it for you so that I have the right spelling. Okay, that's by the way. <laughs> we branch that side. Okay, so total load will be equal to uh, the Average loan to users multiply by what? Multiply by this uh, total loan users. Enter, copy that to the right. Now, remember what we said that hey, uh, this loan, right, uh, kind of depend on the savings that we have. So now we've gotten our, yes, this is our typical uh, total loans that we think we can give out. But remember this other guy, which we call. Uh, okay, so far, let's even factor in our average loan time first before we even go further. So, equal to average loan times. So, you can also see that the way I'm telling the story, that is the same way my input uh, has been structured. So, please, it's, it's very, very important to keep that at the back of your mind because those are the kind of things that makes you a great modeler. So, this, and uh, let me put this in my multiple. So, once... Right, so you can see that this they kind of follow each other. That's why one point five one times. Right, so I also now need to consider. I need to consider that. Consider that in this our total loan is also multiply. So in fact, I like keeping things uh, simple. So this is the loan. Open the brackets. Put it in bracket. Multiply by the loan times. So enter. Have that. This is total loan disburse. And now remember, I was saying, hey, loan disburse is a percent of savings. So, which means we need to first get the cash that we have from that savings. Right? Which will be the next thing. So, loan disburse from savings, enter. Uh, FinTech model can be so, so uh, bulky. Right? Um, so that it's, it's kind of easy. Most time when you are building it, that is when everything is uh, flown into your brain. So you need to simplify, simplify it very well. So let me just copy this, our format here, our formula, and paste it here, look, and change the row number, row 43. That's 43. 43. 43. And drop that to the right. So now, this will now be our what? Loan available, available to be disbursed. Right, so this will now give us our loan available to be disbursed, and that will now be equal to this forty percent multiplied by this my savings. Uh, this my average savings. You could decide to use the ending, but let's just use the average savings. Enter, copy that to the right, and we have this. Right, which is means that this is the loan that we have. This is the cash. Uh, we should even call this cash available, not loan. Cash available to be disbursed as loans, and this will now give us a restriction to be able to get our actual loan disbursed. Right, so I, I, I hope we are, we, are, we are getting the whole story. Right, so that means I will now use to I will now need to restrict my loan disbursed to my available cash. Okay, so maybe we should, let's increase our loan disbursed. Let's maybe we should increase it to sixty percent. Right, so which means so we're saying a hey, sixty percent loan out, twenty percent reserve, twenty percent investment. So that's more like the approach. So the actual loan disbursed, right, will now be equal to minimum of my total loan disbursed, comma, and the cash available. I'll close the bracket and press enter. Which means in this first month, yes, we forecasted that they can disburse the loan of 1.3. But based on from the cash that we got from the savings, it's saying no, you can only disburse 
point two one, and that is what we now have here. So I just copy that to the right, and here we have everything. Which means they now, by the time they get to, I think that should be more like in year. At it, let's look at it. Right. So remember, this is also for management decision. So by the time they get to something like the following second year, they now decide, hey, you know what? Let's increase the number of loans that we can disburse since we now have more savings. So which means they will now, they, hey, the more we increase our savings, then the more we can have available cash that can be disbursed out as a loan. That's what we have here. I said that hey, you know what? 60% this period, maybe we should increase it 70%. This period 75, right? This period 80, and this period 85. So the old strategy will now be like, hey, you know what? Let's try and increase our savings. The more savings we increase, that means the more cash we can have available to disburse out as loan. Now let's create our loan schedule. Create our loan schedule. We need our beginning. Our beginning loan balance. We had our new loan is bust. Right, then we have our what? Our non our non okay, so no no no. We need our repayment. We need our repayment. So we now need to consider our what? We less our non performing any loan balance. We can have this. Right, should now be the next thing that we need to do. Let's create that schedule. For beginning balance, we call we always be equal to previous ending balance. New loan is both to be equal to this loan that we have here. Enter the payments. We need to do that, right? Non-performing loan. So now let's link. Let's get our non-performing loan. So I can just let me call, let me bring it here. Let me bring that assumption here equal to. I'll bring my non-performing loan percent enter here and bring that here. So this is also a percent. I can copy. Let me just copy one of this my formula. Put it here. Look at that. It's in row forty-five. Row forty-five. So let me change my return vector to forty-five. Copy this. And then we have this. Which means my non-performing loan be equal to. So let's just work with the same that same approach we use, right? But let's just say equal to my beginning loan balance plus my new loan. Then multiply by what? Multiply by that my multiply by my non-performing loan descent. Enter. So we'll come back to that repayment, which is where we are going to do the magic. So equal to beginning balance plus my new loan minus repayment that is blank currently now, minus my non-performing loan, enter. I can drag this everything for the period. Right now, let's calculate our int our interest income. So equal to our yields on loans. Right. We are coming. We want to do, we are going to do one interesting thing on that repayment line. So let me copy this guy here. Let's see. These are percent. Okay. So the, that percent is set monthly. We don't need to divide it. That is. 49 so row 49 in this row 49 and we have our respective loan. so what's what about what is our average loan uh, average uh, loans and advances right so that will be equal to average of previous period and current period Remember, this is just to make adjustment for tiny differences. Then we can have our interest, interest income, to now be equal to my average loan and advances multiplied by what? By my yield on loans. Copy to the right, and we have this. This is more like the interest income that they will be uh, generating. So let, but let's put everything together. Let's call this one. Uh, let's call this income. Um, Let's just okay, okay. So let's just go to the output. Okay, but before we do that, if I let's let's even create it here. Let's call this one income statements. So we could call it more like a concise uh, income statement. And what we want to see is hey, what is their interest income? Interest income, and what is their uh, interest 
interest expense, right? So this one will be addition, while this one will be subtraction. Then we have the and what's what do you call it? Net interest margin. I hope I'm correct. Net interest income. I hope I'm correct. Please correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> right. So this would be like equal to. So this is more like a concise income statement. So we can link our what is our interest income? This is our interest income. What is my interest expense? I'll go up under my savings and link that to my interest expense. Enter. Then my interest income is my interest income minus my interest expense. And uh, this just show how well they will be generating some interest income, right? So uh, okay, so I said I'm correct more, <laughs> right? 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 Sir. So if they want to increase this interest income, then they will know that hey, what do we need to do? What do we need to do? And that's what the whole reason behind you building this model. Now, prepay our repayments, which is the most important thing. That is where we need to spend more time on. So here, I'm going to. So I, I just decided to do that typically so that you understand it very well now let's now let's build out our repayment so i'm going to give us two approaches repayment i'm oh, sorry our repayment <laughs> repayment so what is the period so the period is saying hey loan period should be anybody we give a loan should be for three months just for three months right three months three months three months three months now what basically what he's saying is hey people that have taken loan this loan of 1.1 uh that has been disbursed in this period would be repaid over months over period of three months so that means i'm saying he called to this guy divided by this guy right let me even keep that constant so that means this this morning will be divided let me see okay so okay so so that means what we are getting here will be divided by over three months so this person will pay all the, we expect these people to pay back in the next three months. Now, let me ask us, uh, okay, so, 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 so that's what we are saying, right? Okay. Yes. Yes. I think this is correct. So, or we could decide that, Hey, you know what? Let's work with the ending loan balance. But if you are saying we should work with the ending, uh, loan balance, I said, they're allowed to be flexible. So it doesn't make sense. This or that. We now need to ask, Hey, but we've already factored in non-performing loans here already. Right, so I feel we should work with the new loan disbursed. So, which means we are saying this over period. But the first approach is, hey, let's even assume this whole thing will, everything will come back in the next three period. To do that, we now need to let me call this the repayment, and this this one is loan period. So I said, okay, you know what? Hey, this person that is taking loan, the whole money will come back in the first three years. I'm good. That's the first, more like the first approach. So to do that, we are going to use a formula we call offsets. Offsets. So in case you don't know about offsets, you can't. So offset is more like, hey, I'm standing here and I want to go there. How do I move? Right. I hope, I hope you understand that. So hey, I'm standing here and I want to go there. How do I need to move? Right. How do I need to move? So that's that's what that is saying. So here I'm going to say equal to offset. An offset of what? This loan that has been disbursed for this period. Comma. So hey, stand here. And from here, I want you to move to the next column by three. Right? So first thing is comma. I don't don't move by row. Remember, numbers are row, uh, alphabet are columns. Comma. Then column, as I said, I want you to move by the next three months which means from here can't the next one two three that is where you now give me this same result back but remember we are working it backward so which means i'm saying this month of january that means it is the loan that we've given out in the last three months that we are going to be getting back here so that's why i need to put minus so that it reverse that so Open the bracket. That will now be my period, which I'm going to keep constant. Right? Let me close the bracket twice and press enter. So first month, nothing. Second month, nothing. Right? Then third month, nothing. Then fourth month, look at what happened. Hey, you know what? Yes, we've given out our loan to this guy in this first month. 
and now it's going to pay back in this period and if you look at that formula just as i mentioned hey we are standing here i said hey, go back to the last three months everybody that we've given those supposed to pay us back now you can see now but now it's coming in in the fourth month so which means i'll need to minus this my period minus one and press enter so that that funding just coming in month hey this is what i gave you down here you are paying me everything i'm collecting my cash fully in this period this guy that has taken his own his own two will become the next three months and you can see how that trend just kind of flow so let me call this repayment uh using using offsets this function right so offset is, is one very powerful tool in excel right it's just saying hey i'm standing here move like this move like this move like that so that's what that is saying so if you come here and say equal to we link this directly to our repayment enter right now you can see what we have our loan ending balance reduced significantly and you can see that our net interest income is now at a significant loss it's interwoven one that's one now if you are doing this the next question is don't you think we are wrong because definitely we are not giving out a bullet debt because bullet debt is mainly is main uh, is is used by corporate uh, organization where they take a loan right they just repay you some interest expense by the time they want to repay the principal they pay everything all at once we don't want that because you also need a very good cash management right so which means this might not be 100 percent accurate so what i'm going to do is i'm going to delete this let me delete it let me delete it now this will now take us to our next one which is building that dynamic loan repayment right and i'm going to uh, let me just create uh, what i'm going to do is let me create a blank a blank excel here a blank worksheet here so we have how many months we have 60 months first thing is let me bring down my loan disbursed so loan so if i can call this one let me call this uh, uh control i'll call it my control worksheet i usually have something like that whenever i'm building my model so here will be my loan disbursed right because if i so you you understand the reason why i don't want to do it inside of my calculation yeah if, if you want to yes you can do that if you prefer that so here um let me create a period here period count so equal to this plus one so i need how many we are building it for five years so i need 60 months I need that 60 months i need that 60 months if i let me close my excel at the end of that 60 months it's easy for me to walk through that okay yes so my disbursed equal to i'll just link that to my calculations this is the actual loan disbursed enter for that period we have everything like this so what is also my repayment period I can also link that to that same calculation so my repayment period what is three months right so now that same period let me recreate another period so i want to create more like is i'll call it a waterfall yes a waterfall of a thing which that hey person that i've taken loan in this first month when are you paying back this you that you took your own uh, loan in this period when are you going to pay back so that we can see how that's just kind of uh uh roll out right so here let me just create that same period again so 60 so i'll now create it by this side another period so this will be one if i let me work smart here All right so i think there's a formula that can help us but let's let's let me let me still let me let me be this let me be lazy a little bit so i'll go to this my few right and i need series so uh this should be by rules right it should stop at 60 and i'll click on okay okay no uh, that should not be i think that should be the other way around right here series uh, maybe you should put it by columns and you should stop at 60. so yes so so we have this so one to 60 months i will now need that at the same loan right our loan so let me call this period period 
period, then we have our loans. Now, I'm now going to use transpose. For, let me try and close my Excel here as well. Okay, so that we have everything ahead. Okay, perfect. So, I'm now going to use transpose, right? All this loan that we have here, I want to transpose it back here. I'm going to use, I like everything called to transpose. Come to all this, my loan, this boss. I like everything, close the brackets, press Control shift, enter. Let me open up everything. So what that means is, hey, this person that has taken a loan this period, we need to pay back month one, month two, month three. Right? So which means one, we want another one. Then person coming in year two, we pay another one, another one, another one, another one. The person that has taken in month three, we pay another one, another one, another one. And you can see that this is what we call more like a waterfall repayment. Right? Now, this is now what we want to automate. This is what we want to automate. Let me uh, let me remove my line. Okay, yes. So this is what we now want to create. Let me put a border across this. Let me put a border across this. Right, and also the same thing here. We want to create that waterfall repayment approach. And to do this, we are going to use a logical function in Excel. Logical function in Excel, that is what we are going to use. And we call this, we use AND function. So equal to AND, I will open my brackets. Right? The truth is, AND is still more like uh, some of the basic formula in Excel. that you as a modeler, that you need to understand and know how to use it. So, and the first thing I want to test is this. My period that I have up here, which I'm going to log the row, because I'm going to copy it down. Are you greater than, or are you equal to this period that I have up here? That's the reason why I had to create the period uh, horizontal and uh, vertical right so let me even close that bracket and press enter it's true because one is equal to this one that i have here right what i'm saying hey one i have one here i have one here which is month and month and i'm saying hey this month are you greater than this month or you are equal to so if i come here and i press here so it's going to give me true and true is the same thing as one right first is the same thing as zero in excel so here you can see that yes, two is definitely greater than this guy, which is what that second thing is saying. That's one. And the second one, which is hey, that means the loan, this person has taken loan and it has started. We now need to consider the second condition, which now be equal to this same period up here. Keep the row constant. Now, are you lesser than or are you equal to? This time, open up another bracket, right? My loan period, which I'm going to keep constant, plus this same period that I have here, which I'm going to keep the column constant. I know this is more like some advancing, but don't worry, the recording will be shared with us, <laughs> right? <laughs> right? Enter, close the bracket twice and press enter. Now, if I copy this, now, true here, true here. Because number one, here I have two, here I have one. So, so some things that are more of logical reasoning, and that's more like the same concept we apply here. This is supposed to be for three months. Right? It's supposed to be for three months, so which means at the end of the third period, it's supposed to pay everything. So, which means I will need to come back to this, my formula. And now minus one from here. So minus one, enter. And if I copy this, you can see in the third period, everything is fully paid. Now see that impact. Let me multiply it by one. Let me multiply this by one. I said this is more like some advanced things, right? And let me copy it down. You can see what we call this waterfall. A glance. And see how everything just kind of falls. 
So, hey, this first three points. Hey, this one is, uh, is coming in. You start his own repayment this period. This one, you start his own repayment this period. This one is coming here. He's starting his own repayment this period. But remember, we are not using this one, right? It's not one that we need. We need the actual amount. So, I'll just come back here. Now, I will now put everything that has given me this true or false. I'll put this in the brackets and now multiply by all my brackets. This amount, which I'm going to log the column, divided by what? Divided by my loan period, which I'm going to keep constant. I'll close the brackets and press enter. Do this on my advances. This on my advanced things, right? Uh, the recording will also be shared with us so that we can take a look at it. Then you can drag everything to the right and copy it down. And this will give us the true picture on how the loan will be repaid over period so pay 1.1 this person will start it will pay this percent this period this percent this period this percent this period so in case maybe the company wants to include some percent that hey if you take a loan maybe in the first month you pay 45 percent of it in the following period the pays also percent in another period the pays also percent your head you can factor that in as well but we are not going uh, to that route yeah in case you want that you can reach out to us so we can Yes, that's right. So here now that we have this in case, in fact, if you want to change this, so let me put this in our link cell style so that anyone that comes in here will not think uh, this is just any other value so they can understand this. So in case if you now decide, let's even change this to six months. Six months enter, you see automatically this automatically calculate and adjust. Okay, you know what? Let's give them grace. Maybe anybody that take loan should take it for four months. Four months, enter, and you see every. but this will be changed from the input. So let me put this back to what we had previously, three months. So you just, everything just automates. Like, oh no, 10 months. Just, they just put the 10, and you see the whole thing just calculates as a waterfall. Right? So let me put it back to the three months that we have here. So now we can now sum up our repayments. So let me bring this down. So I can put my repayments here. So this is now our repayments. Our repayments will now be equal to summation of all the cash that is coming in in this period. Enter. And now drag that for all the period. That is what we now get as our what? As our repayments that help in that cash management. So I can go back to my calculation, right? So let me even remove this, remove all this. Let me remove the space that I created. And this repayment, I'm not using this offset. I just just did use that so that you understand that hey, this is more like one approach where they are using bullets. But if the loan is amortized, definitely they will be using uh, that waterfall approach. That I can come in at equal to come to that in my control and link it to the repayment here. That's for the right to the right. And here we have this funny thing. I can see here is people are repaying, right? <laughs> um, but and what they have, so 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 that this this is where you now start making those adjustments. Making those adjustments, so right for this period, it seems uh, the the non-performing loan is way higher. So maybe you can adjust our non-performing loan to be more like a percent, right, of the previous one. So maybe you should use the approach previous multiply by uh multiply by that what's our non-performing loan let's see if that work so this this i do that you know, as i said it's not a one-way thing the reason why it's common there is by the time you see the output it's easy for you to go back to your input do the adjustments right if uh, effect that in your calculation to make sure that hey this is making sense so now here it seems their uh, interest expense is way higher than their interest income and rights and this is one like hey you know what we need to now start making necessary adjustments so you, all you need to now do this time is say hey, come back to your input with this uh this this savings yield is way too high maybe right per annum maybe we should give maybe we should set it at something like 7.5 how what would the effect be go to your calculation you see that effect it's increased significantly right so hey, maybe we need to reduce our loans that will be given out because that uh, it seems the interest expense is way higher than the interest income. Maybe we should increase the interest income. Or so, so you just start asking different questions here and there. So you know what? Maybe we should start increasing our the number of our savings. And all they need to do is to work with the inputs, and the output will 
what we automatically uh, adjust and that we enable decision uh, making right so uh, big thanks to every one of us i believe you gain one or two things from this uh, uh our webinar series here sorry that we had to uh, uh buy uh, additional time right so uh here i'll be dropping my pen i'll be dropping my pen